He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, overcoming death. Praise be to God. And welcome to the Agungwit Baptist Church online for our Easter Sunday service video. Glad that you could be here with us as we come together to give thanks to God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Savior and to give thanks for his promise that all who put their faith in him also will rise to eternal life. Praise be to God our Father and to Jesus Christ the Son and to the Holy Spirit that he has given to us. And welcome. Let's begin this morning by singing one of our favorite hymns together, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Let's sing. Christ the Lord is risen today. Father, thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you for all that it means for us and for the whole world. Thank you for your promise of eternal life for everyone who believes that like him, we also will rise to live with him and with you forever. Lord, thank you for your desire to, to be reconciled to us and for all that you have done your plan throughout the ages, coming together in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Help us now, Lord, to live in the relationship that we have, have with you because of him, to live in eternity now, that we might have eternity's values in view in all we do, starting right now, today, Easter Sunday, tomorrow, and forever. We ask this in the name of Christ, our Savior, the risen one, Amen. Amen. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon and Peter. 
and the other disciple. Then the one Jesus loved and said, the, They have taken the world out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over to look in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon and Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth they had been, that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the top of the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the other disciples then the, then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood out of the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over the t over to look at the tomb and saw two angels in 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 the white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my word away, she said, and I do not know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not she did not re realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking thinking he was the gardener, she said, so if you have carried him away, please tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaki, Rabboni, Jesus said, do not hope. Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the world, and she told them told them that he had these things to to hold. Have you ever? experienced a life-changing event. Maybe when you found the person of your dreams. One of my favorite songs is the song Maria right, from West Side Story. Anybody know that song? Maria, I've just met a girl named Maria and suddenly the name will never be the same to me. Maria, I've just kissed a girl named Maria, and suddenly I found how wonderful a sound can be. Maria, well, you get the idea. <laughs> you can just imagine to whom I used to sing that. Somebody who's part Italian and whose name contains the word Mary. But that song says it all, doesn't it? Suddenly, the name Maria will never be the same to him now that he met that special someone. Or maybe when you became a parent for the first time, if you have, and if you have not and you're planning on it, well, get ready. It is a life-changing experience. You know, I used to be cool before the children came, really. I mean, I, I was not the kind of guy who would follow a nurse around with a newborn all around the hospital dragging four overnight bags just to make sure that the baby doesn't get lost or switched or something. But guess what? I became that guy in a split second when my oldest son was born. It was a life-changing experience. And there are many such experiences that can come to us throughout our lifetimes. But there was never, never a more life-changing, more profound moment in the history of the world than the scene from our scripture reading this morning. You see, Jesus, a great teacher and a prophet, beloved of his disciples, whom they had hoped was the Messiah, 
had been crucified on Friday and laid in a tomb. His disciples had been scattered and were in hiding because they feared that the Romans might have a cross for them, too. It was Saturday, the Sabbath. Nothing happened on the Sabbath in Israel. It's a day of rest. So the disciples stayed in hiding, weeping, mourning over what had happened. Saturday was D-Day, if you will. D for despair, D for discouragement, D for disbelief, for disappointment, for depression even, for desperation, and for death. On that Saturday, it seemed that Jesus was totally defeated as his body lay utterly dead in a rock tomb. The spear that had pierced his heart and his tongue had gone silent. To the disciples, Jesus' mission, whatever they thought that was, had failed. Death had taken him away as it does every human being. Death was absolute. Its power over men and women, undeniable. And no one was betting for a resurrection. Saturday was D-Day. You know, our lives in this fallen world can seem like it's filled with D-Days, can't it? Maybe that's especially true in this time of trial that we're going through right now. To live in defeat and despair like they did on that Saturday, sometimes that seems like mankind's fate. Shakespeare captured that sentiment in his famous quote from Macbeth. Life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Because all things fail, all things fade, the people we love disappear and are gone, even Jesus, it seemed, in spite of all of his power and wisdom, had succumbed to mankind's greatest enemy, death. The women who came to the tomb on Sunday morning did not know that they were going to end up celebrating Jesus' resurrection with him. They weren't expecting that at all. They came to anoint a dead man's body. They were looking only at the lower story of God's story, forgetting God's upper story and all the plans of God which Jesus had tried to reveal to them, which he had come to bring into fruition. We talked about that last week. When Mary Magdalene came to the empty tomb on Sunday morning, it's still Saturday to her. Jesus is dead and, and dead is dead. She's beside herself with grief. The sadness of Saturday covers her heart. And not only has her beloved friend and teacher been crucified, but now on top of all of that, his body has gone missing. She begins to plead with the gardener to tell her where Jesus' body has been moved, when suddenly, something incredible happens. Suddenly, that life-changing moment is upon her. She looks up, and realizes that the man that she could only half see through her tears is not the gardener at all. It's Jesus, alive. And in that profound moment, in a split second, Saturday gives way to Sunday. Grief gives way to joy. Despair gives way to hope. Doubt gives way to faith. Saturday was D-Day, a day of defeat and death. Sunday is the day of hope, love, resurrection, and eternal life. Sunday is the day of eternal love, hope, 
and life, the day of resurrection. Jesus is alive, and that changes everything. It means that he is who he claimed to be. It means that his teaching is from God, just as he said it was. It means his sacrifice for our sins was accepted by God. It means that he is the Christ, the Son of God. It means that he can give eternal life to whomever he pleases. It means that the lives of his followers are not just sound and fury, but have eternal significance. All of that must have been suddenly obvious to Mary when she realized that Jesus had risen from the dead. In fact, she calls him Rabboni, which means more than just rabbi. A rabbi means teacher. Rabboni means great teacher, master, even Lord. Doubting Thomas has the same reaction when he sees the risen Christ and he puts his finger in the hole in his hands and, and his hand in the wound in Jesus' side. The Bible tells us that he fell on his knees and proclaimed, my Lord and my God. The disciples on the road to Emmaus have a similar reaction. When they finally realize who it is that they've been traveling and eating with, did not our hearts burn within us as we spoke with him on the road, they say to one another. Jesus is alive. Saturday has become Sunday for Mary, for Thomas, and all the disciples, and for you and me. For we have not put our faith in a dead man, but in the risen Lord of life, what must it have been like for them when they saw Jesus alive? I can only think that they felt what we will feel on Christ's return. Now, quite a few years ago, we had an earthquake here in southern Maine. And my son Aaron, who was just little at the time, he told us that when he felt the ground shake, he ran over and he looked in the window, out the window, and he looked up at the sky to see if Jesus was coming back. <laughs> And we, we all chuckled a little. I did too. But we do believe that, don't we? That Jesus will return just as he promised he would? Just as he's kept all these other promises that God made? Just as he rose from the dead as he promised he would? When we look up at the sky on that great day, and we see it split and we see Jesus descending on the clouds with all his holy angels. And we realize that all of our faith for all those years was truly justified. When our faith becomes sight and we are about to inherit eternity with our Savior. How will we feel? I think that's how the disciples felt. I think when they were together in the upper room and Jesus suddenly appeared among them, risen and alive, that's how they felt. I love what Jesus says to Thomas when he appears to him after, Jesus, after Thomas finally believes. He says to him, You have seen me, and so you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Why did Jesus rise on Sunday? Well, Sunday is the first day of the week. I know we think of it as the last, but they did not back then. To them, Sunday was like our Monday. Why did Jesus rise then and not say on the Jewish Sabbath, the holy day? Well, why did the Jews rest on the Sabbath? Because in Genesis, God rested on the Sabbath day, the seventh day of creation. So why did Jesus rise on the first day then? Because Jesus is starting a new creation. You know, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. And we will see in the last chapter of the story that when Christ returns on the last day, he will make everything new. And so now we who believe in Jesus are part of a new kingdom. 
And every day, we should live with the realization that the old order of things that seems to still reign on this earth is actually passing away. That the glorious kingdom of God, which began with Jesus' sacrifice and resurrection, is the wave of the future. That you and I are already a part of it. Is anyone ever truly unhappy when they're on their way to their favorite vacation spot for a few weeks? I mean, even if things go wrong, you can only get so down when you're already on your way there, right, to that place. I mean, if you miss your connecting flight and get delayed, well, so what? I mean, it's a little annoying, but hey, you know, we're on our way to, to Disney World for two weeks. Woohoo! We are pilgrims on our way through this world to somewhere else, to God's eternal kingdom. While we are on our way, we should live with that destination in mind. For we are no longer mortals, but sons and daughters of the living God. We already have eternal life. Our mansion in heaven is awaiting our arrival. We are brothers and sisters of the King, Jesus. And just as death could not hold him, it will not hold us. So let us live as if every day were Sunday, the day of resurrection. Let us live in a Sunday state of mind, in the day of resurrection, life, and hope, remembering every day that we serve a risen Savior and that we are on our way to glory. For Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead Death is not the end. It was not for him, and it will not be for us. They came to the tomb, but they did not find a dead body. They found a living Lord. And Saturday gave way to Sunday. Despair gave way to hope. Grief gave way to joy. And death gave way to eternal life, not just for Jesus, but for all who put their faith in him too. The resurrection changed everything for Mary and for the disciples and for you and me and for the whole world. Would you join me in prayer? Thank you for the resurrection of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Father. Thank you for all that it means for us. Help us to live in that, the knowledge of that resurrection, today and tomorrow and forever, that we might be filled with hope and love for our neighbors, that we might be able to live lives of victory, even in a fallen world. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Amen. And now let's sing together our closing hymn, another Easter favorite, Up From the Grave He Arose. Up from the grave he arose 
With a mighty triumph for his foes, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey, Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. May the peace of Christ our Savior and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. May the peace of Christ our Savior and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. Forever and ever, forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.